Hello everybody, let's play some Six Ages. Seems like it's been ages, if you will. That was a clever pun there, wasn't it? And I'm just going to get rid of the echo that you may be experiencing right now. That's going to happen momentarily. It's not going to be like those calls that you have with your friends where you're like, all right, who's causing the echo? And then everybody's got to mute their audio one by one, and then everybody mutes their audio, but still it doesn't get rid of the echo. No, you will not be put in that sort of futile, no-win, Kobayashi Maru type situation here. The uh, echo will be eliminated, and in fact has been eliminated forthwith. All right, so here we are in uh, year Elestina 10, which means the 10th year of our illustrious chieftain Elestina. Um, and uh, what have we got going on here? Uh, this year, our objective is going to be to basically perform better in battle. <laughs> Not necessarily to initiate battle, because nobody else seems to have difficulty or any qualms, I suppose, about initiating battle against us. So what we're going to attempt to do is protect ourselves to the maximum extent that we can. Um, and as always, if you see any audio issues, feel free to identify them. Uh, but it's looking like it's pretty good to me. The levels look good to me. Um, so this is sacred time, the beginning of the year again. And I'm just holding this iPad up here so that I can read it because otherwise I'm <laughs> I have to look at it through my mic pop screen, which is not the most convenient. Um, la or not the most visible. Last year, 29 babies were born. We initiated 12 children as adults. Congratulations, children. The clan has two more people, 27 fewer head of cattle, and two fewer horses than we did last sacred time. Our craft has produced 43 cows worth of goods. Our market made a profit of 50 cows worth of goods. And still, we've only got 58 goods, which is a testament to how, much, uh, how many goods we are expending on shrines. Maintaining our shrines took 17 cows and goods worth 34 cows. Case in point. In the night sky, Zarlin pointed toward the fan. This was a clear sign that he wanted us to explore distant lands. We are known for our many shrines. I should hope so, given the amount that I spend on shrines on an annual basis. All right, so let's allocate our magic here. We have a mere five magic points. We don't have a lot this particular year. Um, perhaps we did something that displeased the gods the previous year, although um, for the life of me, I can't recall what it is if that's what happened. Uh, we are going to put a point in pastures because I want to add to our cattle herd. I'm also going to attempt to increase our herds in addition to increasing our defensive capabilities this year. Uh, ooh, okay, what else are we going to do here? I'm going to put a point into war. I'm going to put a point into exploring because I was told to do so by Zarlin. I'm going to... Um, I've got two magic left. I really don't have a lot of magic this year. Uh, I wonder why that is, since we com actually completed a ritual of taming the river just recently. Uh, perhaps our magic will be increased if we do what Zarlin wants, which is entirely what I intend to do. In fact, probably during the very first phase. Uh, well, you know, we've still got two magic points. I guess if I if I need if I have a particularly critical battle, uh, then I'll just save one uh, to spend on that because that would be a fairly poor showing as far as my magic expenditures at the beginning of this year. Otherwise, so um, I will put uh, a point in diplomacy. And then I shall proceed. Our market and trading magic can no longer support trade with the Ruby Gate clan. Why would that be? The famed hunters of the Ruby Gate clan went up north and brought home meat from a woolly tusk beast. I thought the meat of those animals was tough and not so flavorful, but they insist otherwise. They feast on it now and will preserve much of the meat for later. They brought down a woolly mammoth bully for them. The Yellow Hills told others that they had beaten us in a game of Chadash. Naturally, they did, they did not leave out the fact that we need the head of, or that we use the head of a Var Living chieftain as the ball. The Var Living clan blames us as well as the Yellow Hills for this great affront. I can imagine why they might be a little bit upset by that. I can't completely blame them. On the other hand, the Var Livings have not exactly been particularly hospitable to me, having attacked me multiple times, although as I'm always fond of saying in Orlanthe society, that's just sort of a friendly gesture to go out and, and kill a few of, uh, people of another clan. If we weren't doing that, then, um, you know, it just wouldn't be very neighborly. Food yield shortfall. Okay. Uh, that would seem to be the the most pressing issue here. Uh, I would be interested in trading some goods for food. So let's see what we can do to rectify that situation. All right. All uh, right. I think I would like to send a caravan to someone who is known for their abundant food or their many herds. Uh, okay. Known 
of the aggressive pursuit of train. Okay, anything that ends with ing, that would be, or lanthi, that would be uh, the rams, who I'm not that eager to visit. Okay. Uh, most of these people are our friends, except, yeah, these, um, <clears throat> these wheel people. I can't say that I'm a big fan of any of them. Okay. Known for their hunting prowess. Uh, okay. Known for avoiding conflict. Well, maybe that'd be someone who I want to send my caravan to. I mean, they'll be so eager to avoid conflict that they'll accede to whatever terms that I want as far as trading is concerned. So, wait a second, okay. I will sell goods. Wait a second, why can't I buy food? All right. If I can't buy food, I'm going to call in a favor. They owe us a favor, okay. These amber people, they don't have their aggressive pursuit of trade. They probably have abundant food stocks as a result of that. And so I think even if they won't, uh, even if they'd otherwise be driving a hard bargain, perhaps I can call in a favor. And, you know, it never hurts to sweeten the pot. Okay, uh, and I'm also going to look at the clan screen and see what kind of ventures we have going right now. We have trapping for furs. Uh, the purpose of that being to increase our goods. Because you can never have enough goods, or you can never have too many goods. Uh, the clan mood is optimistic, which is wonderful. And we can start another venture. What might that be? Anything that gets us food, because who knows? I mean, who knows? These people may choose to be jerks. Uh, to whom we, The people to whom we have sent the emissary and not give us food. So it's going to be important for us to have a fail-safe here. Uh, yeah, I'd like to gather some food from the wild lands. Ernasta and our forgers searched high and low and found many tubers that could be harvested over the coming weeks. They would be able to make use of this bounty for about a year. Excellent. So the uh, foraging was a success. Your emissary Erastus approaches the Ambers, asking them to make good on the favor they owe you. Okay, so apparently we can't ask for food. But livestock is going to be helpful because cows produce milk and goats and even horses because we drink horse milk. I believe we drink fermented horse milk too, actually, when we really want to party. We, uh, we rider people. Customary number of cows. I think I'll go for 20. They said they could not spare the cattle for their fortunes were bad. They asked Arasta to come back some other year. Ooh. Um, well, that's why I foraged. Because you never quite know. Um, these, uh, these favors, you know, clans only consider themselves loosely obligated to perform them. Or at least they feel like they can, put, they can blow you off for a full year. So um, if they ever come asking me for a favor, I'm certainly going to remember that. I will remember that, like in a Telltale game. Their relationship with me has changed. Let's just put it that way, okay? All right, welcome back, everyone. I apologize for the sound issue. I don't know whether, um, yeah, it's something about this game because I've streamed other games before and I haven't had these kind of sound difficulties. Um, hopefully the sound didn't become completely unlistenable before I smashed those Naronan, um, who I uh, particularly wanted to give a smashing to. So, um, oh no, I'm sorry, the Paral Un was who I just smashed. Um, I would love an opportunity to smash the Nar Anan as well. I would love an opportunity to smash all those arrogant wheel people um, because of their aggression and uh, general maltreatment of me. So, uh, 
we were told by the gods, we were told specifically by the god Zarlin, that we ought to explore. And so that's precisely what we should do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exploring distant lands. Well, that looks pretty distant, doesn't it? And we put a point of magic in exploring. That nickname the Rams gave us, the Ghost Friend, certainly hasn't faded into memory, as well it shouldn't. You remember that, you dirty Rams. It's used more than ever now. I know I've become increasingly bellicose as time has gone on. Oh, they did this again? Oh no, it was the Chav Ashtray the previous time. Uh, members of the Ku Randar clan have maimed one of your young warriors, Entars. Charioteer nobles dragged him onto one of their fast-moving carts and blinded him with a punishing solar bolt, then threw him from the cart, so the rest of us could behold the shame they inflicted. Entar, who will never fight again, who says he wishes to rise to the sky. This means stepping into a sacred pyre to be burned alive. He would then rise as smoke into the stars to fight alongside the gods there. Um, I'm not very pleased with this. This was done to me uh, once before by these jerks, and you can see why, if you're just watching this for the first time, I, there is no love lost between me and these wheel people who really have caused me more difficulties than uh, the uh, the rams even though the rams are are the are the more foreign people and uh, theoretically we worship the same gods as the the chariot people uh, let's see Okay, spirits might help, according to the raven worshiper. Magic will grow his eyes back. What if I did call on spirits? Yes, we do. We'll try doing this. Entire sight was but dimly restored. Okay, we did spend a magic point. He could make out rough shapes, especially in the daytime, but would never fight again. Um, all right, so there needs to be some vengeance taken for this. Because I get the feeling that the charioteers really don't understand anything short of a good horse whipping, if you will. And that's a particularly, um, that is a particularly appropriate term here, because they are the people who deny the divinity of Hialor, um, the horse god. And we'll show them that divinity with a stern horse whipping, or something like that. Anyway, so I've sent my exploration party out. Uh, I believe it's now Earth season. Yes, it is. The clan mood is reserved because some unfortunate things have been happening recently. Only six families are on the circle. Uh, what can I do about this situation? We can start another venture, okay. Uh, I would like to see if we can uh, look for another opportunity to get cows. We're likely to produce more food than we need. Okay, that's a good sign. We have foraging bounty, and we have hunting bounty because of Dostal's blessing. Wow, it seems pretty bountiful, if you will. Spirit indifference. Yeah, well, I'm indifferent to you, too. See how you like that. Feel my indifference. Distant exploration omen. Hopefully, hopefully our exploration party returns and fulfills the promise of the omen. If we explore our own lands, okay... Uh, we can support another trading partner if we had devoted two points of magic to diplomacy. Okay, so devoting magic to diplomacy is the, okay, or, or my failure to do so was the reason why I no longer had the Ruby Gates uh, as a trading partner. Although, as you can see, I still have, I, I still have uh, seven of them. We should buy more cattle. We don't have enough. Okay, I, I agree with that. Uh, so let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to buy herds. And a good situation is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to send Dostal Karn, who has been a reliable trader for us in the past. I don't want the coup render. I'm not going to send them to any of these uh, wheel jerks. Uh, what about these, okay, ruby people? Is there anyone who's known for their abundant herds? Uh, these people who, um, they're known for their wealth. They like us, but mock us. All right, well, uh, their situation food-wise, I'm going to imagine, is, is fairly good. Let's see if that turns out to be the case. Okay, well, now I understand a little bit better the mechanics of this game. I like the fact that the mechanics of this game 
uh, are sort of revealed slowly over time. <laughs> it can make the game a little bit more challenging, but certainly it makes every turn an interesting series of discoveries. And there are, there are sufficient differences between the mechanics of this and King of Dragon Pass that they, they keep me on my toes. Uh, even though there's a manual, yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't tell you everything. Uh, okay, insufficient warriors. That's a situation that I'm going to attempt to deal with now. Uh, we have four swords who are absent. Okay, well, I guess that's the reason we have insufficient warriors. We've got nine. Uh, and we have nine total, but there are four who are currently away on uh, expeditions. We certainly have a lot of fortifications. Fortifications. Hopefully that uh, helped us in our recent smashing of the Peril Un, which I will continue to boast about. Um... Uh, let's see here. All right, well, our goods are not that high. Maybe it is time to do a venture that will give us some additional goods. Increases goods. Our crafters were inspired with creativity. Kimka praised the thinness of the gold plaques. Gotta have thin gold plaques. If you must have gold plaques, let them be thin. Or something like that. That's what this is saying among the writer people. No, sorry, I just made that up. Uh, okay. Um, elegantly copied sacred texts. We're back from an expedition which took us to the northwest. We explored an area I can only describe as untamed and unpopulated. A party of elves blended in with the foliage and, and, until we drew near and attacked. Judging them too strong to fight, I let it retreat. The wind spores, or the white spores they emitted, made this difficult. Three of my explorers were killed. We lost three horses and the goods and equipment of the slain. Well, it seems that the god Zarlin um, did not steer us right this particular year. Or perhaps I didn't explore where, where Zarlin wanted me to, although I did go as distant. I did go to a fairly distant location. Uh, let's see. Uh, our caravan is back from the Shining Blossoms. We traded 40 cows worth of goods for 52 cattle. Huh? That is quite a significant increase. Uh, you get the sense that the Sagarin fear you a little, as well we should. Perhaps due to our smashing of the Paral Un recently, of their, uh, yeah, of their chariot-riding scum brethren. As wheels, outnumbered in the valley and fervently committed to their ways, they make a point of never showing weakness. Ah, this is some insight into wheel psychology. This is why they're so obnoxious. There's a method to their madness. Yet when your emissaries and traitors cross paths with them, you can tell they're nervous. When we fled the ice, the wheels said, you are our serfs. We said, here are our swords. Specifically, we're going to stick them in you. Their nobles do not help the people. They tyrannize them. We do not whoop against the wheels because it is easy. We do it because it is hard. I do it because they're there. Uh, they appear to have more portable wealth than me, which seems unjust. The more you threaten a wheel, the braver he gets. Wheels hold more gold in city ways than we do. They subjugate their women and observe a long list of taboos. Oh, that's right. Yes, they don't like women emissaries being sent to them. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll make them fear us with a whooping run. I had never done any whooping before, and that seems to be a very important rider custom, or a custom from both uh, both the wheel and the rider people. So we shall whoop away, uh, and apparently this has this uh, is has to do with combat. We will send Zuchi, our worshipper of vanilla, the uh, the war the uh, woman warrior goddess. Our toughest warriors rode past them, filling the skies with their high-pitched, demoralizing cries. They brandished threat sticks handed down from their ancestors. This showed the Sagarini what they would have to fear if we chose to exchange sticks for swords. The Sagarini rode around us in their carts, throwing rocks and goat entrails. Zuchi said wheeled nobles trained themselves to suppress sign of fear. Suddenly they attacked, killing five warriors. Zuchi fell and was trampled beneath the chariot's wheels. Okay, there needs to be some vengeance taken for that as well. The clan mood is worried. Yeah, there have been some bad things happening. Um, maybe we should have demanded tribute, although it looked like they really were just kind of spoiling for a fight. Uh, right now it's dark season, so we're not going to do any raiding. Uh, but generally, but we got our herds back above 500. I'm pleased about that. Distant exploration omen. Did we fulfill that? I, if, if somebody's going to tell me that I didn't explore a distant enough locale... There's going to be hell to pay. 
because that looked pretty distant to me. And all it, all it did was get some of my people killed by elves. We have four swords. There are four swords. And none of them are absent. Okay, well, we need to do something about that immediately. We raised five warriors. Okay, excellent. Okay, we're now up to nine swords, and the goods are steadily increasing, which is great. I, don't talk to me about more shrines. I cannot afford more shrines at the moment. Uh, let's make sure the songs are all about the clan that won all its raids, not the one that raided us the most, not the one that raided the most. No, I, I think that's certainly not us. It is rare for me to raid until I am until I am severely provoked, which does happen here in the Black Eel River Valley. There are clans that seem to go out of their way to annoy me. And then I tell them, here are our swords, in keeping with the rider legend that was just recited. Uh, okay. I can't start another venture now. Okay. People are fairly open-minded. People could be in better spirits, but that isn't a priority. Exactly. I agree. We've got more important fish to fry. All right. Uh, let's see if we can get another, um, get a little bit more lore or learn another blessing. Uh, Karna seems like as good a cause as any. Sacrifice the customary eight goods, and she reveals the trading blessing. I love it. The herders report that someone tried to steal Stormbrave, their best stallion. The thief didn't get far. It was a ram girl, and she fell off and broke her neck. That's unfortunate. The herders are happy that they still have Stormbrave, but we might want to let her clan know. Do you track down the girl's clan and return her remains? You know, I'm going to say yes, and then it's probably going to say, the Orlanthi were furious, and they killed everyone. But let's see here. Um, but because I want, I, you know, I'm always pursuing good relations, uh, often to my detriment. Asking around, we were able to figure out from the designs on her skirt that she was from the Kestangi clan. Uh, they were sorry to learn the news, but said we had done the right thing to let them know. All right. Well, we actually got the desired outcome from one of our, from one of our diplomatic missions uh, this year. People of the Yellow Hill clan have been acting skittish around you lately. Doubtless this is due to your fighting prowess, which we demonstrated recently by smashing the Paral Un. I, I, <laughs> I, want that, I want my boasting about that. I want the tales of my valor to, and, and, uh, to be heard throughout uh, the Black Hill River Valley because I particularly dislike them. Uh, some of your advisors say that is a problem. Others, that is an opportunity. Uh, well, these Yellow Hills, you know, the, you know, we rider people have got to stick together. I'm not going to fight them. Uh, I'm going to give them a bit of a gift. Now, the response, they, they, the people said that we were weak. The people whooped at the ring for its lack of cojones. They accepted our gift, though without as much gratitude as we expected. The people grumble and the warriors grounding the loudest of all because they just wanted to kill them. Well, I guess that's what warriors want to do. That's kind of that's the problem with having the standing army. It always needs something to do, right? It always finds a reason to do what it does best. Uh, so there's this distant exploration omen, which looks like it might still not be fulfilled. So perhaps I need to do another mission against my better judgment. I'm going to send my friend Avardar. Just before we returned to the village, one of our explorers acted on a hunch and dug into a hillside. It turned out there was a substantial amount of rubies to be found. If we wish, this will keep our crafters busy for years to come. Okay, so perhaps that is the... Uh, uh, spirits, perhaps that is the reason why it's a good idea, or, or, or that that was the gift of Zarlin, and we just had to be a little bit persistent, and despite the fact that the elves uh, that we came upon slew some of our people, in our original mission, the second one bore fruit. Uh, spirits can be lazy, as lazy as the rest of us. They will not help unless we ask. For example, the healing spirit has not done anything for us in a while. It's good to hear, but not a priority. Okay. An Urgishite trading party. A hairy bunch of Urgishites, as they said in uh, Joseph and the uh, Tactical Dreamcoat, um, shows up wanting to exchange their goats for our their goats for our goods. They don't herd cows or use horses. 
and show no interest in trading for anything other than your portable goods. Their goats look different from yours. Your clan's goat experts covet them. Uh, well, uh, let's learn a little bit more about them. Do you gift them? Yes, we do. Then I may be giving them so many goods that I can't afford to make the purchase of whatever they offer. The Urgishites proudly told us of their deities, the foremost of which was Father Goat. They do sound pretty goat-oriented. His consort Mother Goat sounds much like your goat goddess Uryarda, though they reach her through different tribes. Rites, I'm sorry. Their warriors emulate the might and ferocity of Brother Lion, who protects the Urgishites in exchange for meat. Seems like a good deal. They are still interested in exchanging goats for goods. How many goats do you want? Uh, how about six goats? We bargained shrewdly, gaining six goats for goods we valued as being worth two cows. People chattered excitedly as they examined the new additions to our herd. Excellent. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's minor, but every little bit helps as far as our herds go. Okay. We got a foraging bounty, hunting bounty, and herd bounty. Excellent. And uh, it appears that this uh, distant exploration omen still is not fulfilled. I really hope that um, I haven't messed up in some way and I'm going to lose the opportunity for additional clan magic. We have spirit indifference because we performed a taxing ritual. Okay, that explains it. Still don't know all of Nialda's blessings, okay. What blessings does she offer? Increase the fertility of our women. Uh, I'm not so worried about fertility right now. Adventure effects, okay. Well, adventure, yeah, that looks useful. That's what goods are for. She revealed the, unveiled the mystery of her crafting blessing. Okay, I like that. Well, I see that the mood went down already. I can tell this is bad news. The Carant family overheard one of their marriageable young girls, Orala, confessing something terrible to a friend. She said that she loves Asborn, a warrior from the Oromarth clan, meaning, uh, we, meaning um, uh, 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 rams. They are vinkotlings who forbid their people to marry yours, as well they should. Marry those dirty savages. Riders forbid any dalliance with the Stormfolk, let alone marriage. You obey the prohibition for many reasons, not the least of which being that offspring of rams and riders are prone to become evil magicians. Orella's indiscretion causes much consternation among your people. Still for said to his daughter, you have been caught in the arms of a ram. Without further word, she drowned herself. There's a loyal daughter there. If only we could intermarry with rams without giving birth to twisted blood music magicians. Yeah, that does sound like something that we should prevent. I mean, it's not just about, yeah, we're not just um, trying to foil their true love out of spite here. We do have a good reason. Spirits laugh at the rigid ways of men. Okay, so she's apparently cool with this. Do not let this disrupt trade. We must guard against this in the future. Uh, if we attack them, we lose, or our shame will be magnified, spreading to her family. Only death will erase it then. Uh, okay, we're going to remind our young women that rams are off limits. Though many of the girls listened with evident impatience, clan elders were glad to see the council correct this laxity before it spread. I am not about laxity here. In the Bright Axe clan. We get our militant sounding name for a reason. Okay. Why is my magic so low? My magic is four. Uh, 30 babies were born. We initiated 15 children as adults. The clan has three more people, 55 more head of cattle, and no more horses than we did last Saber time. Okay. Our crafters produced 35 cows with the goods. Our market made a profit of 67 cows, maintaining our shrine. Okay. The priestess said that storm gods cloaked in mist stayed to her raid on Uryarda pastures. Our gods were busy dealing with this. There was no telling how long that would take. We are now known as Ghost Friends. We've been known that we, I believe we've had that name for quite a while. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to conserve any magic because my magic is so low. I'm going to put a point in diplomacy. Whoops, not two, but one. I'll put... Um, uh, 
let's see. I'm going to put one into pastures. I will put one into war. And because I'm always down for more goods, oh, my goods are at zero. Um, that I don't necessarily love. So I definitely want to put a point into crafting. Last year we did, okay, good. So I'm getting credit for this exploration and, and the calamity that resulted. Last year we minded the omen that said we should explore. Zarlin has circled overhead, blessing our exploration. Or does that mean we should explore again this year? Well, let's find out. Uh, we could not afford to make the proper sacrifices to Zarlin and our shrine has fallen into disrepair. Okay, so uh, we, we need some goods. The Embers continue to prosper through their devotion to trade. They have been dealing extensively with the Ormar things and Starshines, who have also profited by the arrangement, though not as much as the Embers. We should do more to emulate them before their wealth and influence eclipses us. Ah, I see. Um, so they've been trading with the Ormar things and Starshines, the Ormar things being Orlampi, uh, Gloomwalk, uh, so perhaps we should be, perceive, we should, um, be pursuing more trade relationships with the Orlanthi. Gloomwalk, the spirit we gave to the Varlivings to guard the baby Ridalda, caused trouble. It stole all the baby's eyelashes. <laughs> it left not one intact. Couldn't you just leave her one eyelash? Come on. Uh, then soured the milk of their cows. Her mother has been telling her clan that we did not plan to inflict a bad spirit on them, but not all of them hold us blameless. Well, I can't say that I'm going to shed too many tears for the Varlivings, who have not been best of friends with me. In fact, they have attacked me in typical ram fashion. The clan mood is worried. Yeah, well, there have been some bad events recently. I can understand why that might be. But we're going to pull through, as we always do. Uh, yep, our goods are coming back. Our, our herds are back over uh, 500, which I like very much. Uh, we got foraging and crafting going on. Okay. Exploring magic bonus. Uh, perhaps it's the raging of the gods war that's caused the clan magic to be low. Uh, well, since we have an exploring magic bonus, perhaps it's time to do a little exploration on our own Tula. Uh, we didn't really find anything of note while exploring our lands, but we did find a small herd of cattle. They must have been born in some out-of-the-way place last year because none of them had any brands. Well, we'll take care of that. We will brand them accordingly. We will, um... Kusralad, a, a visitor from the distant Hyalurin clan you have not heard of, requests hospitality. He lives far to the north and east, speaks with an unfamiliar accent, uh, and dresses differently than you, wearing heavy furs. He makes a strange claim about a place near his home called Last Tablet Plateau. At this holy site dwells a priestess named Sanala, who is half human and half elf. She is a living descendant of Hialor and the elf goddess Aldria. This causes great consternation among your clan. Elves are plant creatures and no friends to humans, as they recently demonstrated by killing some of my people. Should a mating, uh, such a mating should be impossible, and if it had happened, you would know. Uh, okay. Hialor is the ideal noble. Nobles do not mate with those who hate us, especially when they are plants. If one of us spreads words of this, it must be a Hialor worshipper like me. Or maybe you're just a glory hound. Kosralav might have a blessing for us if we treat him right. Some trades between people exchange more than goods, so such as the trade in this knowledge. If this is true, we can increase our standing by stating, sharing these revelations with others. We must learn the truth of this. We cannot meet Hialor in this world because he ascended to the sky, but now it seems we could meet his daughter. Uh, what if I accept his revelations? Do you gift Kasralad? Yes, I do. I almost never give out herds. We gifted him, and in return, he communicated to us a blessing from Sanala, priestess of the Last Tablet Plateau and daughter of Hialor. We found unity in our newfound understanding. Do you share this revelation with your Hialar ring neighbors? Yes, we do. Just not with the um, the jerky neighbors who don't want to get along, like the uh, the Chav Ashdai and the other hyphenated chariot people. Who do you send to spread the word? Uh, okay. We're looking for magic specifically. Okay, interesting. 
okay, I would be willing to send Karn to this. Um, I, yeah, I think that I would, I mean, not that I think that it's necessarily the case that people, that whoever goes is going to be killed, not that I think there's a significant risk to their life or anything like that, but if I were going to risk somebody's life, it would not be Erasdus, um, whose magic is excellent and diplomacy is also really good, uh, and I wouldn't want to risk Kimka either, also an Akarna worshiper, which is excellent, one of these funny-looking people who worships a shaman, apparently, yeah, who, who is new here. Looks kind of like Maran Gore from the original uh, King of Dragon Pass game, actually. That I'm, I'm referring to Eurissa here. The uh, the Dark Earth Goddess. Uh, well, you know, you can never be too careful. So I'm going to send an, I'm going to send the, the customary size ex escort along. Four of our hiallering neighbors accepted these revelations as we had. Six said we were wrong. Okay, well, hopefully it doesn't cause them to hate us. Well, you know, he the, the guy who came to our Tula seemed like a decent guy. Um, as the first in the valley to learn the Sanala revelation, we will gain extra benefit by building a shrine to heal or We should do this as soon as we can. Well, I, yeah, I guess we just took down our Zarlin shrine. Morale goodwill, I'd like to see that because morale has been uh, somewhat on the downswing recently. But uh, I'm not exactly rolling in the dough at the moment. So we want to find a way to get some goods. How would we do that? Oh, yes. <laughs> Killing other people and taking goods from them. Uh, that's one possibility, although I think that a, um, I think that a better idea, a, a more reliable approach, will be to do what was suggested to me at the beginning of this year and to attempt to trade with some of these Orlanthi now that we can cross the Black Eel River. Uh, I'm going to take a, a momentary look at the saga here, and I don't think this is a feature of the game that I've really shown off before, but this um, feature basically describes in somewhat lyrical and yeah uh, and poetic fashion all of the exploits of the clan during the entire uh, during its entire uh, period of time in Black Eel River Valley which is pretty cool okay and this was the news I was specifically looking for we heard the embers continued to prosper through trade particularly with the oral mar things and the star shines so how, perhaps the oral mar things would be interested in another trading partner namely me You now have access to exotic goods. These increase the output of your crafters. It can make it easier to interest other clans in trade routes. Okay, I like that. Okay. Perhaps we can establish a trade route. Arella, the young woman who fell into the wrong path and <laughs> who fell in with the wrong crowd, that leader of the pack, that doomed Starcross uh, Romeo and Juliet relationship, has gone missing. We can only presume that you ran off to join the Rams, bringing shame on all of us. For the sake of her family, we will from now on pretend that she has died. Okay, mum's the word. We'll hold a fake funeral and everything. We'll hire some mourners. There are some countries where you hire mourners for funerals. It doesn't. It's not a custom that much in the United States, but. Uh, Avadar and his party called on Relativus River Tamer and were able to cross the Black Eel River without any trouble. Hopefully that's going to continue to be the case. Our caravan is back from the Ormar things. The Ormar traders were pleased to receive our first caravan to them. They were happy to get access to a wider range of trade goods and agreed to regular caravans. We also made a small profit from the trip. That's excellent. I didn't think that it would be so easy to trade with these Orlanthi. A lot easier than the damn um, wheel people. Perhaps I can, that, that's who I should focus on as far as the foreigners that I'm trying to uh, create relationships with. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it looks like we need to put magic and diplomacy. Now we're up to 65 goods, which is excellent. Uh, it's now fire season. Uh, I suspect, oh, let's see, I, I want to... Um, I want to look at my war screen because fire season is the customary period of time when you raid. 
But I don't particularly, I don't have a huge desire to raid. Uh, any of these stupid clans are as good to raid as any other. I don't necessarily share that view. We could use more warriors, okay. Well, it seems that we're pretty well protected by our fortifications. There, oh, the food yield shortfall. Okay, well, that seems to be something that it's important to deal with. We can start another. Uh, all right. Well, there's a couple, as far as I know, there's a couple of ways to get food uh, using a venture. One of which is foraging. That was effective for us last time. They were unable to find much additional food. They brought back what they could. Okay. We no longer have market and trading magic to support trade with all our regular trading partners. I fear someone will soon stop sending caravans. Uh, okay. What about this trading... This trade blessing? Okay, so now the... Yeah, uh, now another problem associated with um, our people and the rams fraternizing a bit too much has come to pass. Um, a ram girl... Ornor has run away from her people of the Caswalton clan to be with one of your young men, Zarkord. The rams forbid intermarriage between two peoples, as they should. As writers, you take this a step further, forbidding sexual contact. The hunters who caught them say it was plain that they have flouted this sacred prohibition. If he has impregnated her, it is highly likely that the offspring will become an evil magician. Encourage them to drown themselves, that seems... Um, that seems perhaps a bit extreme. I think that that will... Um, that will not endear us to the clan. Yenfar the Capturer, nemesis of the first clans, issued from the loins of a rider in the womb of a, la a ram. Not a lamb, certainly. They, their, their personalities are not lamb-like in any way. Uh, among the rams, it is forbidden to marry a rider, but not to tryst with one. Well, that's good to know. Me, I forbid trysts. I'm anti-trysts as well. And nothing good can come of that if they're going to breed evil magicians. When we are blamed by evil magicians, they often turn out to be the result of forbidden lust between rams and riders. They'll be fine out there. We guard our women, but perhaps should be guarding our men. I'm going to ask, she bitterly resisted when we separated her from Zarkord. Yeah. We can't have her here. That's not acceptable. Uh... That's only going to stir up a lot of trouble among our people. Okay, so diplomacy. Erastus, uh, let's see. We have someone else with diplomacy that's very good who um, is a worshiper of Elma like Erastus. So uh, if they, if the Orlanthi choose to get violent <laughs> as part of uh, when we transport their, uh, their girl back, then he, we will not be putting Erastus in harm's way, which I like. How many warriors? Well, whenever we're sending something, uh, a party across the uh, Black Hill River, it's a good idea to have some sort of escort. So uh, escorting, we will go. You take a gift. Oh yeah, we're actually, we're doing really well as far as gifts are concerned. I think because of our development of exotic gifts. Please take this girl back and tell her not to sleep with our warriors. Caswalting leaders said they were dis they disapproved of what Onora had done, not because she was unmarried, but because she did it with one of us. They could never forgive her for choosing a stinking rider to tryst with. Well, I can never forgive her for <laughs> being a stinking ram. She would be stripped of rank and forced into a life of servitude. Then Rost said their anger at her overwhelmed any gratitude to us. What do you do with Zarkord? Uh, what can I do? I'm not going to kill him. I'm going to exile him. Zarkord we send into exile. Well, the uh, the relations with the Orlanthi were preserved, at least. It looks like they, um, yeah, if anything, they were just angry at the girl who had trysted. And we treated our trister harshly but suitably in this situation. Let that be a lesson to everybody. Don't sleep with Orlanthi and produce evil magicians. I'm sorry that we had to have such a harsh object lesson, but you know how it is out here. Uh, I think, let's see, do we get an explanation of what God's War Rages means? Clan magic is depleted. It sure is. Uh, I want to take a look for a second at this uh, Akarna. Okay, trading increases the profit. 
Okay. We should send out our most devout speakers to spread the word about Sinala. Very well. I mean, there are a few people who didn't believe me, but I'm not sure that they, um, they weren't exactly at our throats because of their disbelief of what I had said, as far as I understand. Very well, I shall spread the Sanala revelation. Over several weeks, Carnivus started among the clan, spreading the word of Sanala. Our neighbors mostly said we were crazy. No one could be both elf and human, they said, and this Sanala could not be both a liar and a daughter of our namesake God. Not one clan accepted the revelation. Well, uh, well, we did our best. Entars has killed himself. Oh, this was the guy who was blinded by the wheels. Unable to accept his new station after the wheels blinded him, he weighted himself down with rocks and plunged into a deep pond where he drowned. That seems to be the suicide method du jour among the riders. Well, that's unfortunate. But hey, our people are very healthy, and we still got nine swords. Uh, it is still... Okay, it's now Earth season. Uh, the uh, attempt to spread the Sanala revelation was completely unsuccessful, but you live and learn. Let's see. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Um, there seems to be some sort of upper limit to our trading that is caused by, what is it, like insufficient diplomacy magic? It looked like that was it. So uh, perhaps it will not be helpful to me to attempt to trade further until I have, or, or attempt to establish more trading partners until I can put two diplomacy magic in at sacred time. But we can, uh, we can send clans. Okay, so this, this Sanala event is actually very important. You can use the clan selector to see which clans oppose or, or support Sanala. Okay, those would be the believers. Okay, there are the believers. The rejectors, I thought that was everybody. I guess that's encouraging that it's not everybody. And there are the favors due. This menu up here is very useful, but it's, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to slide it because the text is very small. Uh, all right. I mean, that may be different on the iPhone. I suspect that it may be even more difficult on the iPhone. Uh, Okay. All right, so who might we want to um, to visit among the Orlanthi? Who I seem to be surprisingly making some friends among known for white-fleeced sheep. Let's, let's go meet the poor Ganossi. We should have more friends among the Ram Clan. It's precisely what I am attempting to cultivate. And hey, our goods... Our good situation is good, as I like to cleverly say. Wandering trolls. I don't think I have met trolls in this game yet, and they appear to be eating something really nasty, looking kind of like human entrails. Oh no, they're eating fruit. Wandering trolls have uprooted and eaten your yarm tree. Yarm tree's sacred gift from the solar gods yields several different fruits. Losing your yarm tree is a disgrace, inviting mockery from your fellow riders, and, and there I was, not even realizing there was such a thing. To grow a new one, you must acquire a cutting from a living yarn and graft it onto the roots of an ordinary fruit tree. Uh, okay. Another clan will take mercy on us. Okay. Okay. So, there are some, um, one of the recommendations I'm getting is that I should ask for a cutting from a local clan. If we made peace with the trolls, they would instead eat each other's y yarms. Um, the peace with the trolls seems like a very remote prospect, considering the way that they are. And the fact that they eat humans, that has is a traditionally been a barrier um, to peace between trolls and humans in the past. Which clan do you ask? Uh, okay, the Grey Wings owe us two favors. 
and they accept the Sonara revelation too. Seems like a good candidate. Uh, he's got very good diplomacy and happens not to be on the ring, so um, he's our man. Do we take a gift? Sure. They said yes, of course. The real question was whether they would keep this embarrassing turn of events to themselves. With a twinkle in their eyes, the diplomat said they would, but we had to understand that they were repaying us a favor, because this was such a good story that anyone would ache to share it come feasting time. Well, you best just keep that ache to yourself. You're just going to have to keep on aching, bros. All right. Um, and with that, yeah, we played about a year and a half. Um, I think I'm going to leave off for now, but I'm going to get back to this shortly. I know I've been absent from from the Black Eagle River Valley. And uh, I've been aching to return as much as I'm sure that you've been aching to see me return. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm going to satisfy that ache uh, again very soon. Uh, don't you worry. And I'll see you all soon.